All right, thank you very much. Um, so my name is Peter Amstutz. I'm a software developer at Veritas Genetics. Uh, I work on the Arvados project and also one of the founders of the Common Workflow Language. So what I'm gonna talk about today, uh, well, so briefly, so I'm gonna talk about a case study that of a, a genome analysis that we did recently and using Arvados, using Common Workflow Language and using BC Bio Next Gen uh, from Brad Chapman. So, what's the, so the task? We had, um, so the title of the talk is, you know, 1,000 genomes in a week. So we needed, we wanted to reanalyze 1,000 whole hum, human genomes for study controls. So we actually had two customers. One customer had the data, another customer wanted the data. And we needed to do the analysis for the customer who is, wanted this data. So we're acting as a trusted intermediary doing, the, doing that analysis and, uh, so that the customer receiving the data didn't uh, actually have access to the original BAM files and things like that. They only got the final VCFs. So these are whole genome, you know, 30x coverage samples. They're 70 gigabytes per sample. There's a thousand of them. Um, that's a lot of data. We're gonna align and call them and deliver VCFs. So I'm gonna talk about some of the infrastructure challenges uh, required to do this in a sort of a quick turnaround project. So 70 terabytes of data, that's kind of a lot of data. If you download that one file at a time, you can get 100 megabytes a second pretty easily on one node, but that's still eight days just to copy the data. So that wouldn't make this a one week uh, project anymore. So the solution we came up with, let's write, let's do a data parallel data transfer in parallel. We can spin up a whole bunch of cheap nodes, get a lot more bandwidth that way, and get it done in a few hours. Uh, of course, your storage server also has to be able to accept data that quickly, but this is on the cloud, and so uh, S3 can, can actually accept a lot of data coming in. So also, you're grabbing all this data. You need to make sure that you organize it, because if you just end up with a ton of files, you're not quite sure what to do with them. So, we just wrote this as a CWL workflow. This is expressed as a scatter over 100 files at a time. The inputs are the source URLs. We could recognize uh, FASTQ pairs, make sure that they got grouped into separate co output collections. And uh, we can compute checksums on the fly, which ended up being really important for quality checking because the customer who had the data had provided us with a sample sheet, said, okay, these are all the files, these are the URLs, these are the file names, these are the checksums of the files, and turned out that there were several human errors that were made there, so we could identify that and um, make sure that we actually got all the data we were supposed to. Uh, and using a workflow, uh, Farah you know, provided a wonderful talk about how important provenance is, using a workflow just for basic data transfer tasks is actually a good idea because it gives you more information about where these files came into the system. So analyzing the data, we used BC Bio Next Gen, uh, which is about as close as you can get to sort of an off-the-shelf um, workflow uh, or uh, analysis workflow system. So we configured that using Sention, BWA, <coughs> haplotype caller, um, all the things that our, the customer wanted and um, wrote this PC bio produced a common workflow language file which we could then run on our Vados at scale. So this is the one week that one week uh, from let's see. So you can see here that between those two red lines is when we actually ran 1,000 genomes. So at the peak, we had about 8,000 cores. That was, I think, the initial alignment step where we used lots of 16-core machines. And then sort of subsequent to that, we we're doing steps where we we're using a larger number of smaller machines. But this is, you know, so this was our utilization. Uh, so delivering the data, it's the fourth thing that had to happen. This is kind of like the data ingest, but in reverse. So again, we wanted a workflow that, um, you know, set, that sent the data to the user um, or to the, to the customer and we could sort of send batches at a time with direct date stamps so it was easy for them to tell when new data had showed up. 
And finally, you get a lot of intermediate data. We're not uh, supposed to be, we don't really want to hang on to all that intermediate data. So we had a very convenient feature in Arvados where you could mark all these files as uh, having an expiration date. So they stay around for a little while in order to, in case we have to rerun any analysis. Uh, but once we're done with it, we can have a garbage collection process, finds all these uh, files, these intermediate files, automatically delete them. But we still have all the provenance of what we did. We can rerun the analysis anytime. And so the takeaway from all this is the big data future that people have been talking about forever is here. It's been here for a while, but it turned, but the technologies that we have make this stuff really, you know, not that hard. You just have to know what you, you know, take advantage of it. So thank you very much.